This tutorial is to show you how to connect to 32-bit MySQL. Now, you only want to do this if you have a 32-bit computer. It doesn't matter if you're running Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows Vista. First thing you want to make sure is that you have no previous versions of MySQL, anything, running on your computer. So you probably want to go to your control panel just to check to make sure that there's nothing under Add Remove Programs. Look at the list and just make sure that there's nothing there that says MySQL anything. If there is, please go to Remove and Remove those programs. Now, to begin this, I have opened up a copy of the notes. And in the notes, I show you how to install 64-bit MySQL, but uh, there's very little differences, really, between this and how to install the 32-bit version, except for just download the 32-bit versions of the program. So I'm going to use this as sort of a guide to help me do this. So the first thing it says is go to MySQL Downloads. So I'll copy this. Again, this is in your Chapter 9 notes. I'll paste that into the address bar of uh, a web browser. And uh, it says here, download for all platforms. But let's be a little more specific. Let's uh, click on MySQL Community Server. MySQL is completely free, so I'm just going to click on that link. I'll scroll down. What I'm looking for is the 32-bit times 86 uh, version, but I want to make sure I choose the MSI installer. This is actually the executable. If you're installing the 64-bit version, you'd use this, and you probably want to look at my other tutorial. So I'm going to click on Download here. And uh, there's an option on the next page that says, No thanks, just take me to the downloads. And then you need to pick one of these. It probably makes a little more sense to uh, choose something somewhat local. I don't really see any here from <laughs> the United States. I'm kind of surprised by that. So let me download it from Denmark. I like Denmark. And I'll say Save File. And I'm going to navigate to my download directory. If you don't have one, you might want to create one just for the downloads on your C drive. And you want to create a subdirectory here, which is called MySQL. And I think what I'll do is I'll call this um, MySQL 32-bit, uh, so I know exactly what's going on. And I'll even put a year to it. I've downloaded so many versions of this in the past. It's kind of hard to keep track of them all. So this should give me enough information. I should have no trouble figuring it out in the future. So let me go ahead and save it into this directory. Now after you've done that, you want to navigate to that directory. So I'll just open up a um, folder and I will navigate to my C drive if I can figure out how to do it. Huh, funny. Okay, let me open up another folder. There we go. And here, let me go to my download directory. And I see that my download is now complete for the MSI file. So let's go to download my SQL. And here's the 32-bit 2012 version that I've got here. And it looks like it's about 31 megs. So I'll double-click on this and say run it. Of course, MSI in the Windows format is exactly like an executable. So this looks like I'm about to do the 5.5 setup. So let's just say Next. And I accept the terms, and I'll say Next. And let's go to our instructions here just to make sure we follow the sequence. So I've done these things already. And 
and we want to select custom here. And in the next window, um, we just go with the default, and then we'll just click install. And while this is installing, I'm going to um, scroll down to where we are currently in the notes. It looks like I'm about here. And in this window, as you can see in the notes, we're just going to click Next, Next, and Finish. And in this window, if I scroll down just a little bit, this is where we are now. So I'll click Next. And in the notes, I said I wanted a detailed configuration. And we want to make it a dedicated MySQL server machine. multi-functional database. As you can see this follows the notes pretty well. And here we just want to click next. And in the next window just go with the default of decision support. And in this window let's just go with the defaults again. Here we go with the standard character set. One thing a little bit out of the ordinary here is let's include a bin directory as Windows path, but we'll also go with install as Windows service. And in the next window, as I've said here, um, a root password here, and I would suggest you do the same thing as student. That way, if you ever have any questions, yours is set up exactly the same way as mine. If you ever do this professionally, of course, you wouldn't do this, but for right now, it sure makes a lot of sense while you're trying to learn what's going on. So let's just say next. And then let's click execute. Now, as it's doing that, it runs through this screen. going on. Looks like I've lost contact with it just for the moment because it's so busy. Hopefully here in a second uh, I'll be able to regain control. Looks like we're right where we want to be, so let's click Finish. And uh, the next thing I show in my notes is uh, if we want to test the installation, um, we just navigate to the MySQL uh, command line shown in MySQL, so let's go ahead and do that just to make sure all is working well. So I'm looking for my SQL here. There it is. Had to be the last one. And I just select that. And to get in, all we have to do is just type in the word student, as I've just done, and I'll hit return. And if everything's right, you should get in like this. So that proves that it was installed OK. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to install the uh, MySQL 
um, ODBC system from uh, MySQL. So I'll go back to where I was before at uh, downloads. So I'll hit the back arrow a couple times, taking me all the way back to downloads. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the MySQL connectors. And you want to click on the download link right here. So I'll click on that. Now, you may have different versions here, but the process is going to be similar. So just go with the latest whatever time you're doing this in the future. So hopefully this tutorial will be applicable to whatever you're doing. And here we have some choices. So looking at my notes, if you're doing the 64-bit, you're going to do the 64-bit download. Actually, in my notes, I'm showing to do the 32-bit download, which is actually more applicable to our situation here. So in the 32-bit situation, you're going to go with this first link that we have here. So let's go ahead and click on it. Again, this is for 32-bit, so you need the 32-bit ODBC. Again, let's click on, no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And here, let's just choose a download site. And this is the same directory I downloaded things into before. Let's go ahead and call this 32-bit ODBC. It's actually my SQL ODBC. And we'll give it a date, just like we did before, 2012. And we'll save it into there, so there's absolutely no doubt. Now, that download went very quick. Let's go ahead and go to that link. Here it is. And it's an MSI file, so all I should need to do is just double-click on it, and it should install. And let's just say here we accept. And again, going back to the notes after you've gone through this. Um, we're just going to go with typical. And in the next window, let's just click install. And you can see that this is exactly following the notes. And in the next window, we're just going to click finish. So that was pretty easy. Now the next thing we need to do is to get the MySQL J connector. Um, I also see that I'm running um, MySQL right now. I'm just going to type exit just to get out of there. We'll be going there soon enough. Now let's hit the back arrow here to go back to MySQL downloads again. And here's the J connector that we need to go get. And so as in the notes, um, oops.